Hello everybody and welcome back. Oh yeah, just very quickly, just before I start, I'd just like to say thanks to everybody for subscribing and for um, being interested in my channel. When I first thought of putting videos on here two or three weeks ago, I had no idea that it was going to be so successful and that I'd have so many people interested in my channel. So yeah, that's very encouraging and um, yeah, thank you for that. Okay, time to start. So in this video I'm going to show you um, part 3 of how to set up the NRF24L01 wireless transceiver on the Arduino. Um, this video is going to be about getting the actual transceiver functionality to work on these transceivers. So this is what we've done so far. I assume you've watched part 1 and 2 of this tutorial. And if you have, you would have seen some very basic theory and you would have seen the modules wired up and programmed. So if you remember rightly, I wired one to be a transmitter and one to be a receiver, and then I reversed the roles to test the modules. Um, so we got the two transceiver modules and I wired them up and then programmed them. One was a transmitter and one was a receiver. And the reason why I did that was so I could just test them out. So it's easier to work your way up, I find, and, um, and add more complexity to the system as you get more knowledgeable about it. So that was the um, reasoning behind that. So we've successfully got a transmitter to work and a receiver to work, and we verified that both modules are working fine. So now you might be asking, or you might be thinking, well, these are transceivers, so they should be able to transmit and receive. And that's correct. And in this video, I'm going to go through how to do that and some issues surrounding it too. So getting the transceiver to both transmit and receive. Well, the NRF24 is a half duplex module. So you may be thinking that you can get it to transmit and receive at the same time. You actually can't. You can get it to transceive, uh, no, you can, sorry, you can get it to transmit or receive, but you can't do both at the same time. So it can either be a transmitter or it can be a receiver at any given time. But you can get it to transmit and then switch a role with another transceiver. So you could get it to transmit while the other receives and then switch the roles. So the receiver then transmits and the transmitter then receives. You can do that. Um, but that can be quite complicated and the problem is with timing. You've got to tell the transmitter that it's now going to become a receiver and you've got to tell the receiver that it's now going to become a transmitter. And it's sometimes hard to get the timing right on that. But there's a much simpler way and that's what I'm going to go through now. So this much simpler way involves something called an ACK packet. And an ACK packet is basically an acknowledgement packet. And yeah, the receiver sends this acknowledgement packet immediately after it's received something. So it's used to tell the transmitter that the transmitted packet was received. So what happens is the transmitter transmits a message and then when it's transmitted the message, the receiver sends another message back to the transmitter to say, I've got that data. And that's the ACK packet. So the ACK packet, by default, contains no meaningful data. It's simply um, a packet which, which basically means I've received that data that you've just sent. But the interesting thing is, is that the ACK packet can be made to include some meaningful data. So instead of just receive instead of just sending a message back saying I've received that data, you could send a message back saying I've received that data and by the way and then give it some some data, something meaningful. So you can see on the left here, there's the transmitter. And on the right you can see the receiver. So the transmitter transmits some data to the receiver. When the receiver receives it, it automatically, well, not always automatically, but 
in, in our case, it's going to send an ACK packet back to the transmitter. And then the transmitter knows that the receiver has received the data. But what it's also going to do in our example is that it's going to send an ACK packet, but it's going to have some payload data in the ACK packet. And that payload data is going to be the data which the, you want the receiver to transmit back to the transmitter. So effectively, um, the transmitter can also receive and the receiver can also transmit. And this will give us the transceiver functionality or the transmit receive functionality for the transceiver. And this is really what we want. So limitations. An ACK packet can only be sent after a transmitter has transmitted. So of course, you can't acknowledge something that's not been sent. You can't send an acknowledgement packet off to acknowledge a message that was never received. So you can't do that. So you can only send an ACK packet when the transmitter has transmitted a message to the receiver. So if you want the receiver to send a message back to the transmitter, you need to send a message from the transmitter to the receiver before. So the way I'm going to get around this is get the transmitter to transmit all the time and then get the receiver to include data in the ACK only when it needs to. So in simple terms, the transmitter is always going to transmit and the receiver will only talk back when it has data, when it has something to say back to the transmitter. And that's how I'm going to do this. Right, so just before we start recoding, um, I thought I'd just let you know that the wiring will be the same as part one and two. So if you followed my part one and two, the wiring is exactly the same. So you don't need three wire. So in this setup, there will be a main transmitter and a main receiver. So, of course, whichever one is going to transmit more data or on a more frequent basis, that will be the transmitter and the other one will be the main receiver. Okay, so I've already gone over this, but the main transmitter will mainly transmit and then after it's transmitted, it will listen for a couple of microseconds or maybe milliseconds, depending on how we set it up, it will listen for an acknowledgement packet for a short time and then it will read it and then get the data out of it. And then as for the receiver, the main receiver will receive, but it will immediately transmit a packet after a packet's been received. So if it receives a packet, it spends a, maybe a millisecond or less to stop receiving, transmit, and then carry on receiving. So, I mean, it could be, the receiver could be receiving 99% of the time, but maybe transmits 1%. So you can get an idea that um, the receiver is pretty much always receiving and the transmitter is mostly transmitting. So there are no collisions and this is, this is why it will work. Okay, and now for the code. So now I'm gonna show you the two uh, sketches or code or whatever the two part the two portions of code which are going to make this thing work the way we want it to so let's start <laughs> 